All right. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever people are joining us from to watch this webinar. I'm quite excited to be having this um, session with uh, amazing students and a very close colleague and friend and family. Um, it's a very important topic that we're going to be discussing today. We want to look at the power of gamification as a catalyst for student engagement in climate change dialogue. Um, we are hoping that this thought-provoking discussion will um, allow us to explore how game-based approaches can actually invigorate learning and inspire action among the youth. Um, you know, gamification in, in education is not something new. We all love it. We love using it. I'm a big fan of Kahoot whenever I get a chance to introduce it, even at university level. So from immersive virtual environments to interactive simulations, I know, for instance, um, we've had a group of students once who actually developed a simulation game for stock market subject. Um, so, you know, discovering this transformative potential of gamification in really fostering a deeper understanding of, you know, the pressing environmental challenges that we face today. That is what we are trying to get at um, at this panel discussion. Uh, I'm so excited to invite you to join this conversation with um, the amazing students, panelists that we have, um, and unlock the keys to engaging students in critical conversations that will shape our planet's future. So I have the pleasure of going around the screen that we have to introduce everyone. I will start with Ms. Dina Mumani. She is um, head of uh, Morals moral science and social studies at Aldiafa High School. She's also a double uh, master's uh, graduate alumni from UWD. Zina, would you like to say, tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you so much, Dr. Zinat, for inviting me for this webinar and welcome to everyone. Um, I'm seeing very young faces, so it's really nice to see all students, um, you know, being um, involved in such a critical issue in our world right now and giving their insights into this topic as well. It's uh, it's always the teachers talking, but it's really nice to now we'll get a chance to hear uh, the students and their perspectives as well. Um, so, uh, talking from a, from a real uh, school background, I would say that, you know, it's very important to kind of um, inculcate this concept in students right from the beginning. Um, and uh, gamification is one of the, one of uh, the, you know, the best ways, you know, to kind of treat students at a younger age. Um, as we all know, and having kids ourselves, we know more that, you know, kids are into all kinds of games these days and, um. Getting, um, getting these concepts into, into, um, into them at a young age, even if it's through a game, you know, is the best way to kind of get the awareness in. Um, and that's what we kind of focus on at a younger, uh, with the younger age group okay. to kind of. Sorry, I'll stop you there for a moment. Let me just go around the table and get the introductions done first. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then yeah. come back. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we are teachers. We always want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> about some things we are passionate about. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Veena, and welcome to the panel. Um, next, I have Akshita. Hello, everyone. Hope I'm audible for all. Hi, my name is Akshita Bhatia. Like Ms. Veena, I also have some familiar connections in Diafa as I graduated my high school from there. So it's nice to see another Diafite on this That's panel. That's really great. <laughs> yes, and uh, I am a student in University of Wollongong, Dubai. I study computer science, big data, and I am excited to go on to my final year. That is the third year. Thank you. All the best for the final year, Akshita. Thank uh, you. Minatala? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Minatala Dawood. You can call me Minna. Uh, I am a student in UWD. I'm studying computer science, cybersecurity. And uh, right now, I'm like at the end of my second year in this university. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome. Um, next, we have Sahil. Sahil Shafi. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sahil Shafiq. I'm 
the position that I hold today is the newly elected president of the Student Representative Council. And yes, yeah, so I see Ms. Zina is very happy hearing that. <laughs> uh, so yeah. And currently, I am in my second year. I am doing civil engineering. And uh, it's my first time ever being in part of a discussion panel. So I'm really excited to going forward with it. And we are quite excited to have you here. And first one, yay, we are really even, even more excited to hear from you. Um, you. Next, I have Hype Up Mall. Hi, I'm Bevel. I'm doing computer engineering at UWD. Uh, I just finished my second year, so I would be starting my third year. And uh, I'm excited for this, I guess. Okay, brilliant. And um, last but not least, Sami Sheikh. Um, it's quite exciting to have Sami join us because he's actually not in Dubai, UAE right now. He's actually all the way in Australia. Very different weather from us as we are in. <laughs> We are enjoying the hot, hot summer, and he's enjoying the cool, cool winter of Australia. Sami, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sami Sheikh. I'm actually a transfer student to UOW, as Ms. Zinat said, and uh, I am studying Bachelor of Computer Science specializing in cybersecurity, and I feel like I'm in the best position to talk about climate change, considering I went over from a hot place to a cold one. Um, <clears throat> I've also led a panel discussion regarding sustainability and cybersecurity, so therefore, um, I'm pleased to be in this um, webinar and to talk about my thoughts and uh, opinion on game, uh, using gamification for um, um, for supporting climate change. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, welcome all the panelists and speakers. Um, so what Sammy mentioned is the Revit Blocks much list that we run um, every almost every trimester at University of Wollongong in Dubai. Uh, the purpose of it is to create this kind of platform that we have right now, engaging students in discussions with us on uh, responsible business or technology use issues. Um, it has been a great platform. Uh, we've done quite a few of them. This is effectively the 16th or the 17th iteration of the of the much list that we are actually hosting today. Um, the mastermind behind this much list was Professor Mario, myself, um, and uh, Ms. Vinita Matthew, uh, so Mario is from Wollongong, Australia, Sami, where you are at. Um, and of course, Ms. Vinita, uh, myself, I'm here. And Ms. Vinita is the founder of Sustainable Minds Dubai, which is a startup company that helps um, other companies become more sustainable and achieve the United Nations Sustainable Goals. Um, Vidhi Sharma has also been instrumental member of the organizing team in shaping the program. Um, unfortunately, she was not able to join us today. Um, as she has prior commitments. Uh, this program also I would really love to mention that has won uh, twice the Council for Australia Arab Relations grant uh, to establish student exchange programs between Australia and UAE. So highly successful platform um, that Sami, Minata, Lakshita have been involved with before. And I think first time for sure, um, Sahil and for Vaikov and Veena for that matter. Okay, so the topic is climate change. And we are talking also about gamification. Let's start with, of course, climate change. We know it's it's something that everybody talks about. Some people vehemently deny it exists. Some people passionately believe it's happening. I think the weather around us speaks for itself. Um, it is referring to the long-term changes in our Earth's climate, including the rising temperatures, really shift in the weather patterns that we are seeing, um, alterations in the natural ecosystems. Um, changes are primarily attributed to our activities, human activities, particularly in terms of emission of greenhouse gases, um, such as carbon dioxide, um, methane, and unfortunately that is creating this greenhouse effect. I think a lot of us learned about greenhouse effects in school, but not necessarily in the form of leading to the bigger discussion on climate change. So I think that's where I will actually start with the students um, to hear um, what do you guys know of climate change? When did you first hear about it? Who introduced you to this topic? Um, I'll go in the same order. Akshita, I'll start with you. So when did I first hear about climate change? Of course, it's during my schooling years, but maybe it could be as early as perhaps when I was in 
fifth or sixth grade. That would be me oh. around 12, 12 to 11 years old. So mm -hmm. that's when you first heard about it or you could see first exposed about it. And definitely, right. like you mentioned, the weather speaks for itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so even you were introduced to it as a subject or as an activity? I think it was, I think it was as an activity and as a discussion, especially uh, in science subjects. Mm, okay. Okay. Yes. All right. That's so interesting. So you're because you got the introduction then from your school from your teachers. Yes. And okay. how about yes? Sorry. Uh, and uh, in our school, I believe in every school they have recycling bins and i'm pretty sure they have recycling yeah. campaigns as well so my school uh the Afa, they had i think some association or partnership with eeg uh, eeg i believe it's emirates environment, emirates environment group. Group. Yeah. yes so we would have cleanup campaigns and it would be like a field trip but for environmental purposes and right. it was fun experience as a school student and it, through that way we also learn about climate change the impacts mm. of it and what can we do to make it better gotcha. in just one okay. campaign so all right wow great great insight there thanks akshita we'll move to mena uh, yes yeah, so i I think I learned like the very first time I learned about climate change was again during uh, school. I think around the same time as Akshita, fifth or sixth grade. Uh, it was part of our science curriculum, of course, because you learn about the different gases and such. It's like it was more of a scientific approach than like you know a general issue that was talked about. And then I obviously learned a bit more about it when I did my IGCSEs in geography. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have like um, a bit of knowledge about it. Uh, we also used to do some like you know initiatives in school where we would have like like Akshita mentioned recycling and such. So we would get like for instance we'd get like some recycled materials that we want to recycle, and then the teachers would weigh them, and based on that weight we get like exchange in marks. So that was uh, a good thing to get us, you know, to encourage recycling in schools. And then we would have like different activities. Each class would do something related to, you know, helping the environment in general. It wasn't like related specifically to climate change, but okay. again, if it helps the environment, then overall it helps with the climate, yeah. right? So yes. uh, it was, like there were those like small activities, they were effective. Uh, that you know encouraged us and like taught us a bit more about climate change. So Fantastic. that was my experience with it. Fantastic, great, great. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, Sahib? Yeah, uh, I think the same. Uh, if you ask me when I first got to know about climate change, will be at school. Uh, but when you uh, when you ask about how they've been informing in school is like through different levels. So as each grade we progress we were getting to know the impacts of climate change, how it has been affected, how we as students or how we as humans are affecting it. So as each stage, when we are growing up, we are getting that realization. That was the through each step. And furthermore, uh, like in action, when I could say is the first time ever seeing it was back in my hometown, where they, the community took steps against climate changes. They took new oh. initiatives. So that that was where I saw like how it was affecting in real life, how right. it can be treated. And even more furthermore in schools, uh, similarly how Akshita told uh, the uh, partnership with EEG mm -hmm. and doing cleanup drives and initiatives. I think these were some uh, practical ways of how, you know, uh, in schools, how, you know, uh, help students realize the impact of climate change and, you know, how to find a solution towards it. Fantastic. So, yeah. Okay. So EEG now has come up twice. That's fantastic to hear. Okay, why Bob? So I learned of climate change as a concept, uh, like in science, right? Like global warming and the greenhouse gases yeah. and all of that. So over time, like I don't remember when I learned about it first, but you start noticing it more and more and more and more. 
-hmm. as you grow up. You start reading more about it. You get to know about it from local news sources or international news sources. Right. So stuff like that kept growing, and that's how I know about climate change. Now in school, we'd have a bunch of uh, what do you say activities or events where we do stuff like plantation campaigns or uh, what do you say some kind of green sustainability drives, like right. uh, cleanup drives. We'd go, we yeah. do. So that was also another part of it. But I think I was more active about it in once I came to university. Mm, like, interesting. Because I, like I started noticing things a lot more in university than I was in school. Okay. That's something I've so noticed. Would you say that was because you're older and a little yeah. bit more aware? Yeah. Or because more open-minded. So like you get to see more things. So you understand more. it better. Okay. How interesting. We will come back and talk more about that. Um, but right now I move to Sami for your first experiences. First experience with climate change was not actually through education as much. It's more of like that because I lived in many different countries uh, that I slowly noticed gradually with every season that something was off. Like, for example, last winter was colder, but this winter it's warmer. Last summer it was uh, like <clears throat> in Dubai we had like 40 degrees, but now this summer we have 50 degrees. So. And uh, even then, when we used to have like these campaigns in school uh, about like climate change and everything, uh, to me, it, feel, it felt like even if I participated, it's like a drop in the ocean. There's really not much contribution towards like the overall change that we are doing. And my belief is that it is on a governmental level that uh, <clears throat> climate change must be combated with because uh, climate change is more of a political issue than it is more than more of an educational one. But uh, it is good that education is taking notice of it because I feel like by educating the our future generation, we'd be able to tackle the issue much more effectively, and perhaps we will find a solution um, through the through us and through the younger generation. Okay, some great observations there, Sami. Thank you so much. Uh, we also have our last student speaker managed to join us. Thank you so much, Shaima, uh, for making it today. I have to just give a disclaimer: the students are actually on summer vacation, so I'm really thrilled that you have taken the time to join us for this webinar. Uh, Shaima, could you quickly give us an introduction to yourself, please? Um, my name is Shaima, and I am 22 years old. Sorry, I'm a bit confused because my birthday is going to be in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> How exciting. Um, and I am in my second year now. So yeah, that's a bit about myself. What are you studying, Shaima? At UWD. No, no, what are you studying? Oh, media. Media. So why you chose media? Um, because I feel like I want to be the person who helps people create something that they're passionate about. And my passion is to edit all of that to make that happen. Also, you know, videos. <laughs> <laughs> videos. Okay. So um, I'll just ask you the same questions I've asked the other students, uh, student speakers. Um, when was the first time you heard about climate change? How did you get introduced to it? Was it in school, your parents, television, teachers? Um, um, if you could just give us that intro. That's actually very interesting because it was all at once. It was all together. So it was like my parents introduced me through religion and all of that because in religion we're big on saving water, which science would later come to explain that like, you know, there's very little of it even though it seems to be too much. And then <laughs> around the same time, um, Greta Thunberg and all of her stuff happened. So I learned from that. And then there was obviously school. They were trying their best to teach me whatever they can. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think the, the one of the very uh, common themes coming out from all of your discussions was that you guys got introduced at a very young age. Um, and school had a big role to play. Um, and I think uh, having uh, Ms. Veena as a panel speaker then really works out well for us because she's actually um, teaching in primary section um, in Aldiafa. So Veena, we will now come back to you to hear a little bit more about why is it so important for us to actually start young um, and start talking about climate change with students. Well, um, hearing everyone's uh, viewpoints was really interesting. And um, as many of the students here, they said that they actually got introduced to the topics um, during their primary years, which is very true because um, it's a part of the curriculum in many of the curriculums, not only British, but even the Indian curriculum and so on, the American curriculum. 
where climate change is introduced um, in, in year five, actually. And wow. um, it's done in, in two subjects, that is the science subjects, like, like Akshita said, and in social studies as well, where we, um, you know, begin talking about um, the natural resources and the man-made resources and, you know, the, the renewable and the non-renewable resources, you know, um, all those technical terms are kind of introduced to the students right at a young age so that they kind of build that awareness of, uh, you know, what's the best thing to use at home. Right. Okay. So these are like, these are, um, nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, you know, who are learning what's the difference between, say, using water energy versus, um, you know, the day-to-day -day what they use, electricity and so on. Um, now, while we are introducing these terms, we're also kind of um, getting them to research on many initiatives that individuals have taken so mm -hmm. while Sami said that, yes, it's at a government level and it's a political um, issues, but kids don't understand that. Okay, these right. are primary kids. They, they don't know why certain decisions are made by the government, why factories are still not shutting Even down. Even we don't you know? know and we are adults. Yeah, you know, and so while we're telling them that, look, yeah, these are factories that are polluting the air, they're, they're putting, uh, you know, they're putting out waste into the, into the rivers and so on. But kids at that age, they don't know, even, at, even as they grow at a, at a middle or senior level, some of them, you can't attack government policies. The only thing you can do is make individual changes. Right? Mm. So we focus on individual and community. So what you can do and what your neighborhood or your school can do, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where it really starts because uh, yes, it's a government issue. Yes, there are a lot of political um, background decisions that are being made by uh, businesses and, um, and multinationals. However, having said that, there are so many individuals out there in the world making so much difference right and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be that okay my my country is not doing anything about it so i'm not going to do anything about it right so right. even those little field trips even those little um creating things from home from your uh, recycling materials making small cuts um, you know, and uh, these are these are really uh, important for uh, for students to kind of do for us to right. do not only students for us at an everyday um, level to do right. So mm -hmm. this is where we kind of uh, rely on a lot of um, project based learning um, and, mm -hmm. you know, where where we where we give students even as young as your five we give them research projects now to go out there find out first of all what people are doing okay right. so it's very easy right. for them to go out there uh, research okay what what's something happening in africa and you won't believe it when they're working in a group even if they're just nine and ten year olds um you know uh, because uh, it's getting younger every day, you know. Um, <laughs> when Akshita was in school, when she was in year five, she was probably 11 and 12. But now year five is 10, nine, you know, that because of the school age has reduced. Oh, so yeah. even if they're nine and 10 year olds, when they get together in a group, they do amazing research. Like I had one group last year who came, who found out that in, in a certain um, village, um, in in Africa, um, they came up with uh, using uh, lamps out of seawater, right? So they they wow. started they built this the they found out you know there was one person who built this technology of how you can convert seawater um, to kind of have a lamp that can last for up to two weeks, and before mm -hmm. that this particular village had no electricity at all. Right, um, the the children had to rely on um, just candlelight and things like that, you know, to even study. So this was a huge lifestyle change to those people. Now it didn't right. take the government to do this. 
It didn't take a big business to do this. It took one person to come up with the solution. You see, right. so, um, so when kids start thinking when, and as they're growing, when they have this, um, this passion that, okay, I too can make a difference. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you remember Dr. Zenith, we even met an alumni, um, at the last, um, at the last, um, Union. meeting that we had, yeah, the dinner meeting that we had, who was coming up with all these sustainable products. And it was, I mean, it's amazing that she was thinking that even as a almost 30 year old, I would assume, but that, that thought came somewhere. It came from somewhere, you know, that right. I can make a difference and I need to make a difference, you know? Right. Yes, so, absolutely. So it's really, it's really important to get them young. Yeah, that, that's fantastic um, what you have captured and uh, given us a, like a summary of. Um, it is important to get to students young and exactly. And I think somebody else mentioned this as well, that it's not about um, just one person, even one person can make a huge difference. Right? And I think being where we are, and I know a couple of times students have mentioned, like, for instance, Emirates Environment Group, um, that these kind of initiatives that we see in Dubai and UAE are really great. Um, I also remember reading this uh, news about this uh, school that uh, where the where this entire school came together, collected plastic bottles and made a huge whale out of it, you know, as a showpiece um, to keep in front of their school um, yard. So um, it de you're right. I think it definitely makes a huge difference when you start young and you get students, um, you know, the buy in comes in uh, because this is a global challenge. It's not something any one person or one country or one region is facing or fighting, right? Its impacts are really far reaching and affects all aspects of life, whether it's food security, water resources, public health, uh, the biodiversity, so the wildlife that we see, the animals and the plants that we see, the socioeconomic stability of countries even, right? So understanding climate change definitely, I think, makes every one of us global citizens um, who are better equipped to address these complex issues. I'll come back to the students and ask you um, from your space, um, what do you think you either have done or could do to, um, you know, um, raise awareness or to, you know, um, help reduce the impact of climate change? Um, I'll go around the same, same order maybe again, Akshita. So I don't really have anything out of the box kind of idea with me at the moment. <laughs> no problem. It doesn't have to be out of the box. <laughs> that's and good. I think that's the best part about climate change, right? Yes, but I believe a good old awareness method could be through video campaigns. I think like Shaima mentioned, videos are something that nowadays we watch a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, I believe um, a visual message like I think this um, quote, a picture is worth more than thousand words. Mm. I feel uh, at least when I was in school, we would have poster making competitions from EEG, drawing art competitions yeah. from EEG. Yeah. We would have a lot of competitions uh, from art to public speaking to recycling, uh, <laughs> who has recycled the most. So this itself is not just an interactive method to get students to participate but again it is also a form of awareness mm -hmm. so i feel that okay. is a really nice that way might be a way to go okay yeah okay. another thing is just posters okay. and videos and yeah. forums okay nana i think the easiest way i can spread awareness is as a student, especially is through social media, we all have, we all, majority of us have access to social media and we have platforms. Essentially, even if I just make a small like post about, hey, this is happening, this is what you need to know about climate change, it will spread and it might reach the right audience where they are in a position of power to actually do something, a big change. Right. So I would have started that chain reaction of, yes, I'm spreading awareness. 
I did that. It may seem small, but it has an effect in the long run that it will reach someone of in a position of power where they can make policies, where they can, you know, do something bigger. But I started that, that, you know, I made them aware of what's happening. And as a computer science student, I can, for example, utilize uh, cloud computing or virtual machines. Those like really help a lot. We talked about it in ISIT. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as a form of sustainable way to go about it. So I think those like those small things really matter in the long term, but mm -hmm. starting it is the most important uh, step, spreading yeah. that awareness. Yes, thank you. Um, and you're right. I think there's so much students can do from their space, right? Um, so Sahil, I'm going to leave you for the end for this because I have an extra question to add to you as the SRC president. Um, so vibe up next, please. Personally, I think giving students a platform to discuss and debate with people who, oh. because students are one of the more proactive members of our community. They like to talk a lot, they like to discuss things. And the best thing about debates is when you have someone who's opposing your viewpoint. The, right. the conversation suddenly takes an unexpected turn. Like oh. they have to actually start thinking like, okay, wait, what are they saying? I have to rebuke this. I have to come up with my own. They, oh. They'll encourage them to actually do some research or look into uh, another viewpoint as well. Right. So, for example, debates or podcasts or something yes. of that sort. Yes. Be instrumental. You're right. It's just pushing people out of their comfort zone. Right? Yeah, it is kind Get of just them. that. Yeah. So. yeah. I like that idea. Sami? Um, I feel like all, all of my colleagues here um, just talked about valid points about raising awareness, but in my opinion that awareness can only do so much. It's uh, We can already see it in our lives that some sometimes when we are overloaded with information regarding a certain topic, we oh, start to filter it out. For example, if you were to tell me about climate change over and over and over again, I will be aware of it, but I will not really take any action towards uh, solving it or like uh, researching because inherently I am lazy and let's be honest, most people are. So that's why they don't really yeah. take action. So I feel like uh, initiatives could be could do a much better choice because with climate change, we have either two things, either we find foolproof solutions or we make small steps and through those small steps, we make people engage with the problem directly. And when you in, when you engage with the problem, you can actually start thinking about it lots, a lot more and more. For example, those cleanup drives that uh, Dubai does to clean up trash from the oceans, the uh, recycling that we do to educate people further on like what, what materials can be recycled, what can be recycled. And that on-hands experience with these uh, events can uh, actually, I feel, facilitate a much better environment and perhaps we'll find a solution to climate change much earlier because by exposing the the youth to these situations where they have to be, where they have to see what factors contribute to climate change is when we're, where we're gonna have a sustainable impact and where we're gonna actually improve the environment a lot more than just through awareness. Amazing, amazing, that's a completely, a uh, different angle uh, to take, but such a valid point uh, you've made that it's not enough to just talk about awareness, but actually to get people's hands dirty, so to speak, right? Um, I will come back to you, Akshita. Let me just let Shaima and uh, Sahil speak first. Yes, Shaima. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Like Sami said, that we could become desensitized to it, right? That's very true because I mean, I hear about a million social issues every day and there is not like much I can do for some and for the others. I've already heard about it so many times that to some degree it's okay, you know, which is messed up, but it's true. Yeah, it right. happens. Yeah. So while I do think that awareness is important, I think that more than awareness, we need to make people understand that what they do on a daily basis is also harmful to the planet. So I don't know if you've heard of the term fast fashion, but like oh, yes. it's, yeah. So brands like Zara that constantly copy trendy looks and then sell them out and then do it all over again, which creates a landfill of clothes. I mean, a mm -hmm. landfill of clothes. So, of clothes. Yes. Um, so like we need, we can make changes like that. We don't need to have the latest trend. You know, it's wow. it's become such a thing to keep up with the latest trend. And I feel like in this society, we also need to do the counter thing. Like, you know, every society had two parts to it, one which supports an idea and the other that opposes it. And yet 
at this moment we're lacking a opposing opposing um, yeah an opposition to this idea that we need to keep up technologically clothing all of that Fantastic. so even if we yeah. recycle if we keep purchasing we're buying our own doom basically <laughs> i love that yes you're right um very well said thank you so much shaima now sahil so the reason i have left you for the end <laughs> In your position as SRC president, what do you think is the capacity of a student body to make an impact? Oh, yeah. So student body, when we talk about student bodies, it's the entire general audience that we have to take in consideration, not just students, but also the entire uni as well, the faculty, the service staffs and everyone. Uh, but when we actually think about climate change and how impactful it is, um, if I just go, just I want to like also give a concept of what all my fellow members were saying. Uh, back in schools and all, when we used to understand about climate change, you know, it's uh, as Sammy said, awareness won't actually make an impact on us. That's why we pro bought in the concept of a gamification over there. That's where we put in competitions for the students. And these competitions were meant, you know, to collect the most number of plastic bottles. Whoever has the highest number of plastic bottles, then they will get a prize. So what we used to do is, uh, by the all the month ends, we used to go to our building, all the flats. We used to collect it, and this oh. brought in a small impact. By like, it, for me, it was the twenty fourth of every month. I'll go around my entire building. I'll go to each and you know, knock. Do you have any plastic bottle? I'm doing this camp, uh, drive. I need it. Uh, if I win, I'll get a certificate. So after two, three months, people used to wait for me. Okay, I know Sahil is going to come, he go <laughs> collect the bottles. So these kind of small uh, things did happen. I feel like in that purpose, it's a necessity that rather than awareness or initiative becomes a necessity. So that's where I want the student body, like our body also to uh, bring an impact. It should become a necessity rather than an awareness or an initiative. People yeah. needs to understand uh, also, in our studies, especially for engineering, we a key point that we always come is carbon footprint. It's a, a very important uh, tagline that we always use uh, in engineering, a very important aspect as well. Over here, again, in our studies, if our carbon footprint is very huge, our projects get denied. So again, over here, the impact is more that's where it becomes a necessity yeah. for us to find solutions where the carbon footprint is less. Uh, yeah. And uh, as being in a student body and holding this position, being the president, uh, if we can show an example that uh, this and how it is being impacted, I feel like it's not um, that I we feel like every single people will be following it, but then there will yeah. be a group of people that will observe it, will understand it, at least if, once in a while, if they at least recycle a plastic bottle, that's that small impact might uh, have a recurring uh, uh, yes. effect. It's called the butterfly effect when we speak about it. Right. It's a small, small effect, but then it just flickers something on to the entire universe. That's what we feel. Absolutely. Um, so well said. Um, and I love that example of going from door to door. Um, I think schools do really well with initiatives like this, really inspiring students to get involved. Um, do you feel university life inspires you guys to do something like this? Because I know Viva has said that when you came to university, you kind of did more, you're doing more because you're more aware. Um, do you generally think that's true? Um, who, I, I will open this up to any of these speakers. Maybe just a show of hands to see. Okay, Mena. Uh, okay, so I feel like because, you know, in school, they used to talk about it a lot, but in university, I come here and we have discussions in certain subjects about sustainability, especially like in my li line of study as a computer science student, and we use a lot of electricity. So we do this topic does get brought up multiple, uh, yeah, multiple times, but in general, uh, in the university environment, I, I genuinely don't feel like we do much outside of classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. I feel like 
if the RC can, you know, initiative and, you know, uh, yeah, and, you know, encourage us to do something, then we would be more than happy to participate yeah. because, again, it's a great opportunity for us to, and we are like, you know, uh, at the level where we can do something, we can do a change. Yeah. So if the SRCs, uh, like a body of students, encourage us and, you know, lay the stepping stones, yeah. we can bring up so much to the table. Much to the table. So uh, I feel like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so again, it's, re it's really specific to certain subjects I've taken. We've talked okay. about sustainability in okay. certain subjects, but in the, like, you know, in the bigger picture as a university student, I haven't seen much, much. being okay. said about it. Okay. I, I personally haven't seen a lot of uh, competitions related to sustainability, though I've been just two years in this mm -hmm. university, but it would be a great thing to think about, you know, involve Bringing us it. more in other competitions. That would be a great opportunity for us as well. Excellent. Sami, I know your hand had gone up and then Maiva and then Akshita. All right. Uh, so then I feel like university students are able to make much greater of an impact because we are more uh, mentally mature and uh, so like we're able to contribute more towards the environment than we were as kids because let's face it uh doing posters at high school didn't really do much apart from just may give us like bonus points in here and there um and because like i know in uwd and even here in uw we do have clubs that promote sustainability who i remember in uwd they uh s promote sustainability drives to clean up the oceans which i feel like is an amazing initiative e even though it's a smaller scale, but those little small actions and steps can lead up to greater uh, consequences that could be on a societal level, which could be just the push yeah. we need to promote um, combating against pollution, which is the, the main driving force behind climate change. Uh, right. So yeah, I would, I would definitely agree that university has a very crucial and integral part towards uh, uh, sustainability and uh, for combating climate change as well as reducing pollution so that the future generation is able to live in a much more, um, at least a somewhat healthier environment than uh, we currently are living in or okay. what our parents had. All right. Yeah, Viva? Somewhat similar to what Sami said, but effectively I feel like in uni, we have a lot more power as we than we did um, have in school. Like we have more outreach. And uh, as someone who's doing science, for example, I actually have access to resources so I can make stuff now that I can uh, right. supposedly, supposedly show as a project to help the environment or whatever. Uh, right. I could have done that in school, but it would have been much more of a hassle. If I didn't have that kind of freedom in university. Right. I do have that kind of freedom. Excellent that. point. Um, Akshita, then Sahil. So like my fellow students, um, like Sami said, university students are quite integral. Um, quite important to this and like Webb have also mentioned that we do have more freedom, creative freedom oh. and we have the most important thing is resources because imagine a high school student <laughs> trying to make an engineering project that will help let's say reduce carbon footprint. Mm. They will have the idea, they will have the support but the resources and the funding that's a bit difficult whereas for university students, they can uh, approach professors and the professors can give them grants or as a collective, they can acquire grants for right. research project. And right. as uh, and uh, going back to the two points regarding social media, I believe like social media is an amazing platform. We can do so much with it, but at the end of the day, it is just a post. For example, uh, I believe recently USA has this project going on called the Willow Project, which mm -hmm. is about oil drilling in Alaska. And that's right. quite harmful to the environment and uh, to the local people over there. It will have severe right. environmental repercussions. And there was yes. this huge viral TikTok campaign called Stop the Willow Project and a mm -hmm. petition as well. But despite all that, um, like Sammy mentioned before, sometimes it's for political reasons that we don't take the right step. Uh, the right. government has not, uh, has, I think has granted and approved for that set project. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it really depends on the individual 
because we can't really force people to do something at the end it is free will it has to come from themselves but from within yes from within but as university as the student body like our fellow president is right here with us they can encourage and i believe encouraging and as long as we get there take the first step right. towards it it, right. it will, life will show the way i guess absolutely yeah. and i love that you brought in the the topic of funding um, i think that's a huge issue right when we are thinking of i mean people see it as a huge challenge or barrier when you're thinking of any kind of change you want to bring in any kind of initiatives you want to take um sahil i know you had your hand up and then chaima sorry sahil you're still muted my dear yeah all right all right i think now i'm audible yeah uh so oh, one second just let me mute my yeah uh so over here like an uh, important key concept that i would like to uh, emphasize is on that our freedom uh, like when we are speaking up or right this forum actually shows that like now we are much matured enough to give a val valid reason which is impactful and again we have this freedom of again uh, to give our opinion open minded and there are people who actually accept it mm. and uh, being in the student council uh, again we always try the the concept of sustainability always comes up because whenever we propose an idea or anything there are a panel of people that will always look if whether our idea is sustainable or not so we always think like what is the re reason why it should be taken into consideration like sometimes it's very, very much things get cancelled off because it's not sustainable but when we look in a larger scale when you're looking in a long term that has an impact that can uh, cause problems yeah so that's why we we might have to neglect it again when you look into the concept of clubs we do have the sustainability club and over there it's again where they put up forums now the latest one will be the cop28 the climate change uh forum where we want and we want students to be encouraged in again come up and speak uh right. over there it's a demanding area uh, bring up debatable con uh, concepts we want people's opinion we want what people said get people to yeah. debate <laughs> yes we want people to debate because it's it's due to these debates we get uh, opinions we understand like yes. it's not my way of thinking that another person is thinking and yes. due to their both conflicting uh, ideas maybe a third person will find a better idea or a solution so we right. feel like yes. these these concept and i feel like in that way it's like a bit of a youth activism that mm -hmm. is being brought in up and i know these these are some key words key elements right. that we can right. always put right. in our mind thanks for including that um shama um so i know a lot of us want to say the src didn't do it so we didn't get a chance to do it <laughs> but um but i feel like most of our activities related to you know green changes that we're making should come from us because oh. yeah the uni can do it they can event organize events in a way that there's less trash or uh, you know i don't know less fumes i guess they can only do <laughs> <laughs> they can only do so much like there's so much of it that falls on us that it doesn't make a difference what stage of life we're in just as right. long as we're constantly improving so like right. uh, if i didn't know about fast fashion a few years ago i know about it now i'm not going to do it now and then if yeah. I don't know about, I don't know, I guess someone could not know about recycling. If I don't know about right. that, then I'm going to do it now. So it's constantly right. evolving, just like with anything else. So I wouldn't yeah. blame the SRC entirely. <laughs> no, no, we are not blaming. We are inspiring. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's I, just... I think it's a very good point that you brought up, um, Shaima, that so I didn't know before, I, I, I know now, so then it's still on me to decide what I'm going to do with that information. And with that, I'm going to move to Ms. Dina, uh, because I think it's a very interesting um, point that we've gone to with the discussion with the students where they're saying they're feeling more empowered, they're feeling that they've got more freedom, um, you know, people are listening more to them, giving weight to what they're saying, so that they're, they feel now they're in a position where they can actually bring in real change. 
what are your thoughts on that as a school teacher um, viewing school students um, making impact? First of all, I just have to say that I'm loving this, um, this thought process that our young adults are having because really it is up to you to make the change, whether you are doing it um, as a part of, um, of an SRC or you're doing it just as an individual, it does start with you guys, because like you said, you are empowered more than your younger, um, you know, the younger population. Okay, but um, our younger population is doing quite a bit as well. I'm not <laughs> sure if uh, all of you have heard just recently. I remember a few months ago, there was this um, young girl. She's about 15. Um, who was uh, awarded um, from the Action for Nature Award because she had collected almost a ton of recycling e-waste material in Dubai. Wow. And uh, yeah, and um, I mean, you can Google her. And, and so just having uh, having that that kind of um, that that passion, that kind of uh, need to do something, you know, I, I don't, I don't believe that there's a specific age for it, but I do agree with all of you that the older you do get, people do listen to you more, <laughs> they kind of respect you more, um, you know, they'll give you the few minutes to kind of really um, step away from the poster making and um, bringing an initiative to life. Okay, and um, but now it's it's up to you to kind of pull the younger population in. Mm. You know, this is where I would like to leave it because because you have the voice, but they have the hands. You have right. the leadership skills, but they have the critical thinking skills. They have ideas. They have the time. Okay, which you might not even have while you're preparing for assignments and things like that. So. Even if you have a branch of your sustainability club that kind of leads or brings students from different schools, and then you do an initiative, you see, then it kind of becomes like, okay, the sustainability club or so and so person did it, but you have this whole group, this whole army of students yeah. working for you, and together you can bring a change. Got it. You know what I mean? And then you're empowering the high school students. Exactly. You are, you're, you know, it's like, imagine us giving you guys the time. You're giving them the time. You're giving them the, the space, the, the voice to, to do along with you, you know? Right. And I think this is an excellent point of the discussion to start talking about um, learning tools or teaching tools or how, how we can actually um, spread spread the word, get that uh, you know knowledge capacity building going. Um, and here I bring in gamification. I love gamification, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, um, I'm not talking about game based learning where you actually create or make games. I'm talking about gamification where you're basically incorporating game elements, um, either mechanics or design principles, into non game contexts, right? For instance, what we are talking about in, in this space of education, um, we have seen and studies have shown, we ourselves have seen that using gamification in learning really enhances engagement, motivation, and helps students reach learning outcomes in studies, right? Um, it, it is leveraging psychological aspects that make games captivating, fun, um, you know, engaging, such as rewards, challenges, leaderboards, competition. Um, achievements. So, you know, it's making that experience really enjoyable and immersive. So we know all of that about gamification. But what I would probably like to do is um, start with Veena mm -hmm. to hear about um, your thoughts on using gamification to teach students. And then I will move to students to hear from you about your experience with gamification and how you think you could actually use this, like Veena said, to inspire the, you know, the following generation. Veena? So, um, you know, at, at a primary level, the concepts are still very new for the mm -hmm. students. So we can't uh, go into a lot of technicalities and so on. However, uh, we kind of 
have started in the last, say, five years to kind of use games to um, to introduce these topics, these concepts to them and and give them a real life, uh, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, like a simulation of what's yeah. happening in our world. Right? So, um, so there are a lot of resources out there now that teachers use. Um, if you, if, you know, I mean, if you're interested, you can have fun with them yourself. So there's yeah. like, you just go to NASA, um, website and you go on, um, climate change. Um, they have a sec separate section. You'll find, uh, they have a lot of games there for kids to kind of, uh, see what, um, you know, about the greenhouse gases about a climate time machine and mm -hmm. you know one of uh, one of the favorite ones is where they kind of uh, become an explorer themselves and they go to different uh, different um continents and they kind of see what um, you know what's happening there you know so they go they, they kind of take the spaceship and they go into Antarctica <laughs> and they kind of you know are looking at all this or they go into uh underground to uh, underwater to see what's happening to the corals and so on mm -hmm. you know so this kind of gives them more of uh like I said like a real life experience you know because uh, we can't really take them to Antarctica or we can't really take them down to the ocean you know but we we use these uh these simulators to kind of show them you know that this is actually what's happening in the mm -hmm. world and then um and then of course there are many more websites out there which like discovery science you know and um there's so many i mean i, I won't go into naming all of them but we do <laughs> use uh, plenty of these to kind of bring mm -hmm. in awareness because at that age awareness is very important you know, these right. small uh, solutions that they do at an individual level, this is very important. And then very as important. as they go into secondary school and so on, they need to come up with their own uh, sustainability projects, um, you know, which kind of reach to a wider community. Mm. So, um, so this is how it kind of goes. Excellent. Um, I think that's a, that's a fabulous intro to what we are discussing in terms of gamification and how it can involve students. So um, I will come now to, of course, our student panels to hear your thoughts on uh, gamification as a as a as a tool to engage students. Um, have you had experience um, using it in classrooms? What were your thoughts and you know what were your um, how well did you engage with it? Um, and then if you can tell us also um, how do you think you would use it? Actually, thank you. Uh, so, I can only think about competitions because having game elements or gamification is not only just it is about having fun, but that fun comes in being competitive, and I think competitions <laughs> really, really um, execute that quite well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can think about competitions as quite the effective way of including gamification or game elements to it. And what I really liked about Ms. Uh, Vina's point about awareness is quite nice. And I really like, th think about this way. We teach our younger generation about awareness so they can utilize that awareness to make it into habit. And once we make that as a habit, we don't really need to constantly be bribed <laughs> to do it. <laughs> like, hey, if you get this many amount of plastic bottles, we are going to give you a price, a uh, reward money or a certificate. The mm -hmm. point is, if we make this into a habit, maybe we are changing the mentality of the people because not mm -hmm. many people will really care for this not many they will care for it but they will not have the time to execute or motivation yes so if i were to use any gamification elements about sustainability debates are quite a good example about gamification and yes. uh, having that scoreboard and you know getting yes the point. I, right yeah i just feel competitions are a good way and I 
I like to bring this unorthodox opinion into this. I think media and marketing also plays quite a good role. <laughs> yeah. <Time up>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can see her. I believe I don't remember where exactly, but I have read somewhere that for climate change awareness, they have put a doomsday clock that will just give a countdown of, I believe scientists and researchers um, had a worldwide protest about how we have like four or five years to reverse or change or rather yeah. salvage any potential uh, catastrophic um events that impact. might ha impact us due to climate change so they to bring that awareness or rather a constant reminder to us to do something yeah. they have marketed yeah. this through media about this doomsday clock so okay. there are certain elements that work really right. well and integrate with other subjects as well so yeah fantastic fantastic thank you so much akshita well well said uh mina uh, so my experience with gamification started uh, during my school years. Uh, the easiest way to implement gamification in a classroom is through Kahoot, uh, through quizzes, and everyone becomes really competitive. I myself become really competitive when it's like time for a Kahoot quiz during class. Uh, it also introduces new topics, like for instance, uh, I don't know if you guys know Scratch. Scratch was like a simple application where you can build, uh, where you can use sort of pseudocode to build games or see just how coding works. So for me, that really piqued my interest uh, as I am uh, as one who is young and it like made me interested in coding and it really simplified the concept. So gamification is really important when it comes to simplifying uh, topics oh. so that, you know, our young minds can understand, can understand it. And then, you know, like Akshata said, once we you know see at first a bit it's like the idea of being competitive or like you know just having fun but slowly you start to build up like hey this is actually like a really interested this is something we need to keep in mind we need to make a habit out of so it becomes a lifestyle and not just for okay. the sake of fun or competition yeah. but something that you know drives us to be better people so that was just my experience in school and obviously in university i've had uh, my fair share of experience as well it's not as common as school uh, rightfully so because we have a lot of students so it's hard to gamify something with like when we have 100 students in a lecture theater or something but uh, <laughs> it's still there and it's like it makes me really excited to you so, know interact in class yeah. so yeah. that's just my take on it thank you thank you mina um sahil yeah uh, right so again gamification for me again started from a very early age at school if i remember i think it was during my grade 10 and 9 where kahoot became a very big thing uh, and at, I was also going through my board's exam. So teachers always try to bring a sense of gamification through Kahoot and everything so that, you know, we keep a feel of competition between each of us. And it was, it was very engaging. It's a one more enjoyable way of uh, doing our work. And again, right now, uh, back in our university, uh, we are again utilizing some forms of gamification uh, in, in sense, because in engineering, our classes are very small compared to computer science. I know you guys are yeah. 100. 20, 100, 200, 300, 400. Uh, where we in engineering is just 14, maximum 20. Uh, so that's that's the field. So again, so we, because we are a small group of students, uh, professors trying to you know uh, to keep us engaged, we, they make us do these yeah. small forms of competitions uh, where visual learning is more engaged uh, rather than auditory learning. Mm. So that's one form. And gamification, again, uh, as Akshita and everyone was saying, a sense of competition is, uh, when we put into students, it always encourages them. It brings a spirit in them. Uh, like how I said, uh, uh, when I used to go collect bottles from all around the building, uh, people became, you know, the, uh, our neighbors, it became a habit for them to, you know, save these bottles so that, you know, they will give it to me. And I feel like uh, that small form of a habit of not just throwing away plastic away and rather that in order to recycle it became a thing. And I feel like uh, these small, small changes can bring about uh, a big impact. And mm -hmm. it's just that we need to uh, go forward. We need to show that we can bring an impact. 
we need to right. move forward that's the problem it's like if we just sit around and give uh just sit around okay scroll on our instagram and everything it's not gonna make an impact we need to come right. forward we need to step out and show that they you know that we can do a change and that's yeah i feel like these are it might be a small small initiative but it can bring a big impact. but it, as, as i think so far we realized even a small small thing can have a huge impact um thank you sahil um Vaiba? I think like when we want to implement gamification or something, so there needs to be some kind of like reward or some kind of incentive, right? But right. I'm making it more like a competition could also force people into thinking everything's instead of thinking of the, the main problem at hand, they think of the competition more. So maybe it could be more collaborative instead, like collaborate with people to compete to compete against other people. Uh, sort of like how hackathons work. So mm -hmm. they could be like brainstorming and whatnot, and it could uh, end up being much more effective because then you would have to work together instead of just being solo against 1v1. You'd have to co uh, collaborate and figure out a much more efficient method of doing something. Like, for example, if the bottle collecting thing was there, if you were working in a group of people and you were trying to collect bottles, you could figure out the best way to collect them, for example, or something of that sort. That's a very interesting uh, take on gamification. Um, and, and I guess um, maybe I will come back to Veena before I move to um, uh, Sami and Shaima. Um, have you experienced that? Like if we focus on using gamification and this whole element of competition and leaderboards that it might actually detract from the actual message and get students to focus more on the competition bit. <laughs> Well, it's very true. Um, I'm really glad that uh, Webov has brought in this different perspective, but um, it is true. This is what we do see in students. Um, like um, Mena said that, you know, you get really excited when there's a Kahoot game and you become competitive, right? But, um, and of course you're learning at the same point, but um, having, Having a balance is very important. So um, I wouldn't say that all kinds of competition is bad because say if it's a competition about um, bringing up the best sustainable solution to a mm. given problem, right? So um, we, ha we have these inter-school competitions are taking place all the time where they're given a specific, um, a specific um, current problem in a in a particular country or so on and then every every school is given uh, the same problem and then the best team who comes up with the best solution you know sustainable solution would would kind of win now of course the students are thinking about the winning but here in the background what's happening is they're forced to think about the best solution right so mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of uh, reaching to a greater objective, even though you're uh, using the means of a competition to do it. So in those cases, I, I would say that, yes, competition is not all bad. Of course, where, uh, like, if you're trying to keep a balance and become more collaborative um, to reach to a solution. So um, even if you are, if it's a recycling drive, that's where uh, a competition would work, but so would collaboration. Okay. And the learning. And the learning, and right? The learning. And yeah. exactly. So a balance is very important in, in yeah. every in every uh, age group. Right. Um, yeah. So Akshita, let me finish with Sami and Shaima and then I'll come back to you. So Sami next. Um, I feel like when we talk about gamification and climate change together, we must really consider the uh, the scope that we are looking at because gamification, if you're not doing it right, we could lead to a lot of issues. For example, one of it could be that we are greenwashing. For example, gamification, while it's good and uh, people are more interacted with it, uh, greenwashing is basically a tactic where, like, uh, for example, some companies show themselves are like, oh, we are very ethical, we are very green, but then. Uh, that don't really make any meaningful changes. So, like, we observe it a lot these days, especially like, for example, when we make posters, it feels like it's a bit of a greenwash because uh, uh, we are raising awareness. But do we see that paying off? We don't necessarily see it. We see it on the walls, but then we start to slowly ignore it because we don't see those kind of changes. Uh, and for example, gamification relies on short term uh, happy returns. So, for example, like uh, most of the competitions that Akshita suggested and that Vibe have talked about. Um, 
we are only focused on the short term growth because we know that as so if you win this game then we're going to get some reward in the end and mm -hmm. it's not it's it's a personal reward it's not the reward that we're going to be making something better for the environment and while we try to do that sometimes our focus is uh, our focus could be misled so that what we're trying to achieve is not achieved and we're just achieving for ourselves um um, yeah, not to mention uh, gamification does not really show the true extent of climate change because uh, whenever we gamify something, we try to make it as simple as possible so that all players can be on the same level. And mm -hmm. it does not really truly show the multifaceted complexity of the problem itself. And so I'm a bit against gamification myself, but it can be a very useful tool if the focus mm -hmm. is there, if uh, it's properly made as per the purpose and reason. Right. It's really interesting that you said you're against gamification. Any particular reason, like, did you have a bad experience with that in the classroom or just generally? What is it that has put you off it? Uh, it's mostly because of the greenwashing of it, because like most of these games that we do, mm. of, of the competitions that we do, yes, we have many winners, we have like ideas, but they're never really truly realized because we don't see further investment into them. And I think that it's, it's, it's exclusive by country to country and by politics, because we see that in some countries, like maybe Sweden and Norway, that whenever someone truly wins one of these competitions, they invest further into the idea. And then we see some substantial ah. changes, for example, like the oceans being cleaned up because this one uh, Norwegian, uh, uh, one Norwegian adult made this idea and then it was further invested by the government because their priority is towards combating climate change and to improving the environment overall and so oh, that's, that's why that's why i said i'm a bit against it it just really depends geographically and on the uh, locale and the government uh, on that level because climate right. change climate change cannot be combated just by a university or by a group of students it requires a bunch more investment by a lot of different parties to actually make a substantial change within the environment at least all stakeholders and i i i love that you said that so gamification as a learning tool is fantastic, but it needs to add, it needs to have some kind of, you know, some place that it's going to. Um, uh, and I think, for instance, um, uh, Sahil had mentioned about collecting bottles, right? And giving it. So that's a great gamification of that process. You know, how, which, how many bottles are you able to get and whoever gets the maximum, et cetera, et cetera. But leading to, for instance, that school that I mentioned who, took the, all those bottles and created something out of it, a uh, showpiece instead of spending thousands of dirhams getting metal and you know all of that, uh, increasing the car carbon footprint, using material that is not sustainable and not environment friendly, but recycling this and actually creating something. That I think creates, you know, completes that cycle that you're It's mentioning just that, that the you... efforts need to be sustainable in this case, because most of the yes. efforts are mostly very short term. So, for example, Zahil could collect all the bottles for this competition, right? Everyone could go back to him. But the thing is, is that it's going to be short term. It's most likely that people will go back to the easiest way to uh, uh, to deal with plastic yeah. bottles, which is just throwing them in the trash. But throwing if there was a substantial yeah. change where it was slowly like change their behaviors where recycling was made uh, more prioritized through like various methods, then yeah, gamif mm -hmm. gamif gamification could be a really strong impact in changing uh, social yeah. behaviors. I get what you're saying. I hear you. Absolutely. Sahil? Yeah. Um, some of the like, what Sami has specifically told, it's understanding. So that means over here, we have to understand the stakeholders that is uh, very much um, that is there in all these scenarios. So when we look into our schooling or anything, we are really in one of, in, if you look in a pyramid scale, we are really at the, almost not at the bottom, but somewhere in the middle. But there are people that actually, well, if you want to look at the impact, there are people at the top. And if they are not um, willing to, you know, uh, listen or uh, to are willing to go for the change, it, it's very much difficult. But what I could say is that uh, at least if uh, we promote these kind of uh, activities or if we promote these kind of initiatives at one stage or the other, it's maybe one of us or one of the students that come up to these top levels. And then they feel like, okay, it's like, I have been learning about this. I've been aware of this. Can we bring a change? So it's, yeah. I mean, again, it's not a very fast, uh, very short term thing. It's a very long term. I may, it might even take years, 
but it's it's just a belief that uh, that that can happen. Uh, that is one possible uh, scenario that we can always think about. Uh, but in other aspects, uh, if again uh, the political aspects, as if I don't want to go very much deep into it, but if people can promote this in that uh, perspective as well, it's a it's, it's a much more faster uh, solution. And yeah, by the end of the day, it's again people's opinions, uh, uh, people's perspective of how they see it. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's how I can uh, move forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sahil. Shaimu? Um, so I would say that on a scale of Miss Zenith to Sami, I stand in the middle where, <laughs> where, <laughs> where I feel like gamification is something that needs to be done carefully because if mm -hmm. not done carefully then it could have effects like what he said greenwashing also in my personal experience uh what Saha said about or was it some i don't know one of you guys said something about um it being short term where the pleasures of it are very short term which is very true because at school i had a competition where only one girl would always win and so i thought oh why even try she's gonna win either way oh. and my teacher saw that and in an effort to encourage me that year she made me win but to me it was like oh i won okay i'm done <laughs> Like I just left it. <laughs> I didn't try much hard afterwards. So like yeah, I, was very, I, I hear you. Know, you. Yeah. yeah. But then at uni, the thing is that uh I think it was Prof Noor who took media. Yeah. Uh so he he taught us about this topic of racism in the media and how anti racist uh, media has been popping up and, you know, uh, aspects of it in social media and in films and all of that. And while we were learning it, I kind of disagree that it has to be oversimplified. I feel like his approach was also interesting to me because um, it was very confusing to get bombarded with so much information at first. But then mm -hmm. as he like used the pros uh, used the concept of gamification, it became clearer what he was trying to say. So he asked us to go outside into the uni and they had an event and we had to go to the event, grab a random senior and be like, oh, hi, can we just make fake news about you? And whoever came up with the best fake news would essentially win. So we all came back with our forms of fake news. And um, so we all had like, oh, this senior, I don't know, won the Golden Globes and this senior <laughs> won like a 10,000 <laughs> grant from the uni. We all had amazing lies to tell, but he came back to class and he was like, so you see this because you are assuming something based on someone's like, you know, place uh, based on an event yeah. that they're taking place in. So you kind of spread this fake news and we're all believing it because we're not there. So he was basically trying to give that concept to us in another class. As I said, the racism class, he gamified it in the way that he asked the screen media students, which was myself and two other people to make videos about it. And then he picked which one was the best. But the thing mm -hmm. is, the way that he did it wasn't that he, at the end he picked, oh, who did it best, right? Instead, he bought a bag of chocolates and he just gave it to everyone. So that kind of took the power away from us to be demotivated while mm. motivating us at the same time. So it wasn't to the extent of greenwashing. It wasn't to the extent of demotivation. It was like somewhere right in the middle, like a middle. good place to be. So that's where yeah. I stand on it. I feel like it depends on the person who does it. Yeah. Yes, you're right, right? I think it does depend on on the teacher or the person who is actually implementing the gamification. I know, Akshita, you had a comment to make, so I'll just come back to you very quickly before I go into conclusion. Yes, thank you so much, Mansina. So all points were, this is what's so lovely about this panel, that we are all discussing yeah. different perceptions and different opinions. So I really liked about collaborative competitions, and I believe one of you have, and like Ms. Me, Veena said, balance is key as it should be to everything in life and i believe one of you have also mentioned about uh an example of norway how the government yeah. has like further brought this and actually implemented it so i do know that uae is doing a lot 
in terms of sustainability at least it's trying to and supporting student projects yes and when hearing about these points i was reminded about my experience which was in school eeg host public speaking competitions mm. which you could consider this as um a collaborative competition where they give us a topic we work in a group of five we have to show and present it to a larger set of audience mostly students and a panel of judges who come from uh, affluent backgrounds and can also you know come from areas where they have resources and the funding and the other project which is in university which miss zenith i believe you would remember is me uh, doing a cs uh, csit 114 uh, system analysis we had a wis project um ms zenith was my teacher for this uh, for that subject and our topic was about uh, wildlife sustainability and this is what's interesting i think majority of us come from a technical background like engineering and computer science and in engineering like sahil has mentioned they have to know about carbon footprint which makes sense mm. you guys are the creators the hardware mostly hardware creators and computer science come from the software creators media is the one that pushes all and basically informs the mass the general public okay. so we all are just one huge system that uh, can make an impact so i remember working on that project and on how to save wildlife animals especially endangered because climate change not only just impacts humans it impacts the human surroundings and other mm-hmm. species and living things that at the end will also impact humans so right. i think that this is such a nice way to put it in so yeah right. and and i think again um from the experiences that you and shyam are sharing i think what's important is what veena mentioned sami sahil mentioned is about that balance making sure that there is that balance between what we are teaching and what we are trying to achieve um and i think um overall uh, i remember my my daughter once said you know they had this kahoot about environment and then um you know the next day i think i was brushing my teeth or somebody was and they, we had the tap open and she came running and she said you need to shut that sh- shut that tap because this is how much water we are wasting and she had an exact amount that she mentioned and all of us got surprised we turned and looked and we said where did you where did you learn that and she said oh we had a kahoot in in class the other day so it does have that impact on knowledge right you are retaining it um you just we may just not realize where how much we have retained and how much it's impacting our behavior but i do think that you know like for instance from today's webinar if you if even one of you takes away um that i need to be a little bit more cautious um about my behavior in using water switching off the lights when i'm walking out of an uh, of a room um you know keeping my ac to 21 22 23 and not going to 19 you know think small things like that also if you take away and say that you know i want to be more aware i i myself want to be the person who is taking the initiative as i think um i believe shaima had said it has to be inter- internationalized uh, internalized uh first and um not just you know saying that not somebody else is not doing it so hence i'm not doing it um veena um last any last comments it's you know it's been absolutely amazing to get so many different viewpoints um and perspectives like uh, you know things that uh, i myself wouldn't have thought about like how sami said about bringing in um it really depends from you know country to country and the the real uh, role that the government plays or the power that the government gives to these small initiatives is very very important um and i wish that it was uh, really taken seriously at a global level to kind of give these voices to our to give that voice to all our students you know regardless of their age um but i would also like to really uh, say that all of you who are now at this forum and you kind of realize that at an individual level you can make a difference if you are a part of a, of a of a um, 
of some kind of a community like an SRC or something, you do have the power or uh, to kind of bring more people in, not only at, at the university level, but even reach out to students at schools because really they're doing amazing uh, work and um, not just making posters, trust me, okay? They are doing amazing work and they do have amazing ideas, but they just, like you like yeah. you said, they don't have the voice, they don't have the resources that you all do. So it's really your responsibility to kind of push this whole initiative forward, you know, do something and you never know, we might hear your names in the papers next. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, uh, we'd be so thrilled to, uh, yeah. to uh, you know, see that happen. Um, so with that, my gosh, how the time has flown. Um, I think by leveraging inherent appeal of games, gamification really can transform the learning process into something that is really dynamic, interactive, enjoyable. Um, so, you know, it is an essential tool in modern education as we see it, but very good points brought in by the students that there needs to be a balance um, it, it should not just be a greenwashing, just something that is there for, for the sake of saying that we are doing something, but something that is more meaningful, that has more impact, um, bringing it in, using it in a balanced manner. Um, and do so that, of course, we can engage and empower students. Uh, but at the same time, I think because we are talking about students and because we're talking about awareness and how important it is to increase student knowledge, um, I think coming to climate change, equipping students with knowledge about climate change, I think we do play educators, uh, play a crucial role in shaping the generation that is aware, responsible, and committed to addressing the challenges um, of a changing climate. Um, you, if nothing else, you need to be able to adapt and be resilient to the kind of changes that you are seeing around you. Um, bring, you know, maybe bring in mitigating efforts from your side and then you know have it roll out to everybody else we've got engineers in our panel today computer scientists and we've got media as uh, you know uh, majors so thinking about empowerment and advocacy social and environmental justice all of these are things that um that are in your hands you can you're the ones who can do this and if you can use tools like gamification and um, game-based elements into into how your um, spreading that um, awareness, how you're bringing about that change. I think that's where we will really truly see empowerment um, and proactiveness from you guys in building a sustainable future for you and for the planet. So with that, I actually conclude this uh, Rebus Plus match list and I would really like to thank once again, Hina for being here and to all my amazing students. Thank you so much guys for taking time out of your summer vacation to join this very important discussion today. Um, and with that, we conclude.